Welcome. Hudson Valley Radio Theater presents a broadcast of engaging mystery, music, and mayhem. All right, men. I guess that's all. Put him on the stretcher and take him to the morgue. Must I stay, Inspector? For a while, Mrs. Bunting, I need all the details for my report. That such a thing could have happened here. Here, in my own house. The Murder Cafe players are pleased to bring you a dark and compelling drama from the world of classic literature. Tonight, The Lodger, by Mrs. Bellick Loundus, adapted for the radio by William T. Johnson, and performed by the Murder Cafe players. The Lodger is brought to you by Ulster Savings Bank, a local bank that's more than just banking, and Studio KTM the Hudson Valley's only Naturalique certified organic hair salon. Go on, Mrs. Bunting. You said you were looking for a lodger. Yes, Inspector, we had to. But I never dreamed such a thing could happen here to us. Why, it was only last Tuesday night my husband and I were sitting before our fire while we read in the newspaper about the latest murder, the fifth, by the Avenger. I remember saying distinctly, Robert, this Avenger person could be the fellow standing next to you, or maybe the man you bumped into. It's a terrible thought. Yes, but it appears to me that the Avenger is too quick for the police. And look here. It says this girl he got last night was like all the others. Pretty, blonde, and she'd just come from a music hall. Exactly like all the rest of his victims. Tsk, tsk, what a pity. Ellen, have you stopped to think who fits that description perfectly? Our own Daisy. Oh, shush. What a pretty thought, Bunting. It's a good thing she's with her aunt instead of here. London ain't a safe place for any girl now. Just the same. I can't help thinking how fine it would be to have her here with us. Well, there's no sense even talking about it. We just can't afford it. I know that, Ellen, but, well, I've hoped we could manage it some way. How? Haven't I scrimped myself up crazy trying to keep us going? I know, Ellen. Well, don't you go worrying about it. I think we can. Now, who do you suppose that could be? Could it be someone looking for a room? <laughs> oh, I wish it were. Then you could have your daisy back. I went to the front door, and when I opened it, there stood a man wearing a black cape and a hat. He carried but a single piece of luggage. Good evening, sir. I saw your sign. It says you have a room to rent. Yes, sir. Please, won't you come in? Thank you. Could I take your cape, sir? No, I'm looking for a quiet room, but it should be very quiet. Oh, we have that, sir. Just that. Above all, our house is quiet. Your bag, sir, may I take it? No, just show me the room, please. Oh, yes, yes, sir. It's right up these stairs, sir. This way. You see, sir, there's just my husband and me here, and we're ever so quiet. I'm sure you'll find this room to your liking. Here we are. I think I like this room. It is pleasant, isn't it, sir? There's not many rooms with such pretty pictures. Now is there? I don't know. Pretty pictures interest me very little. What I like about the room is the, the simplicity. I like the bareness. Uh, I think I'll take it. Uh, what is your name? Mrs. Bunting, sir. All right, Mrs. Bunting. Uh, I'll take the room. Yes, sir. And please, sir, let me help you with your luggage. No, don't you touch it. But I... 
I only wish to... You only wish to help, of course. I understand, Mrs. Bunting. It's... Uh, forgive me. Uh, it's just that I... I'm so very weary. I'm tired. I do a lot of studying. Of course, sir. Of course. You can see how very few things I need. Just what's in this bag. But this is my favorite book, the Bible. It's a good book, Mrs. Bunting, isn't it? Indeed it is, sir. Yes. It says... He brings them to their desired haven. Beautiful words, huh? And now at last, I have found my haven of rest. If I pay you 30 shillings a week for this room, is that satisfactory? Third, why, yes, sir. Yes, sir, that'll be quite all right. My name is Sleuth. Mr. Sleuth? Yes, Sleuth, S-L-E-U-T-H. Think of a hound, Mrs. Bunting, and you'll never forget my name. And here are your 30 shillings. Thank you, sir. And would you be wish wishing anything now? Supper? Tea? No, nothing. Good night, Mrs. Bunting. Good night, sir. Please stop that. You hear? Oh, sir. W w what did I do? You were humming. That's music. But Music but I... is an instrument of sin. Oh, yes, sir. And you did tell me, Mrs. Bunting, that your house would be absolutely quiet. But it is, sir. I didn't mean any harm, believe me, sir. I believe you. I'm sorry I spoke sharply. Uh, I know you're trying to be considerate and kind. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, by the way, Mrs. Bunting, uh, I think I would like some bread uh, and some tea. Certainly, sir. I'll have it in an instant. So he took the room, huh, Ill? Oh, he took the room, and at 30 shillings a week. In advance. Hurry now, Bunting. Is the water for the tea hot yet? Yes. What a stroke of luck. Oh, but oh, put the bread and butter on the tray. I'll pour the water. You know, Ellen, it's wonderful. Do you realize that this means we can have our daisy back with us now? I know, I know. Hurry with it now. Why, why, we can have her back with us tomorrow. Now, there's the water, the tea, the... Uh, it's all ready. Open the door, Bunting. I'll take it up to him right away. Oh, there you go, old girl. First thing in the morning, I'm going to fetch Daisy and bring her home. Oh, it's a wonderful night, Ellen. Wonderful. <laughs> oh, oh, I mustn't. She has cast down many wounded from her. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Come in. And to know the wickedness and folly. Why, Mr. Sleuth, you... Yes, what Those is it? Pictures. Those pretty girls. You've turned all their faces to the wall. Yes, I've turned them to the wall because they were wicked and sinful. Sir, I... Don't you agree, Mrs. Bunting, that everything wicked and sinful should be purged from the earth? Hmm? Yes. Yes, I do. I'm happy to hear that, Mrs. Bunting. But uh, if you'll excuse me now, I have to leave. But, sir, here's your tray. Good night, Mrs. Bunting. For a moment, I was stiff with fear. I set the tray down. He hadn't so much as noticed the light supper I'd prepare for him and rushed to the window to watch. 
He came out of our cottage and moved off down the street, his black cape swirling about him. Finally, he was lost in the fog, and I don't know why, I stared after him for a long while. Well, I did the dishes and got ready for bed. I lay there thinking, and it was almost dawn before I had convinced myself that at most it was a trifle odd, and after all, paying 30 shillings, maybe he had a right to his strange ways. It was daylight when I was suddenly awakened by the newsboy's shouts in the street. Horrible murder. Read all about it. Murder at King's Cross last night. Avenger strikes again. Extra special. Slowly, I realized what the newsboys were shouting. Horrible murder. Avenger takes sixth victim. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Avenger at work again. Another girl falls victim to his knife. Avenger strikes again. Ulster Savings Bank, a local bank that's more than just banking, with locations throughout the Hudson Valley and online at ulstersavings.com. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. As the inspector takes notes on the terrifying events, Ellen Bunting continues the story. And now, Mrs. Bunting, what did you do in the morning? You learned the adventure had murdered his sixth victim. Well, I was a little frightened to meet our lodger, and I kept my thoughts to myself. After all, there still wasn't much to go on. Robert had gone to meet Daisy, so Mr. Sleuth ate breakfast alone. I watched him through the crack in the door. Finally, I went in with more tea. No, no, thank you, Mrs. Bunting. I don't care for any more tea. <laughs> thank you. Uh, you've been very kind. I must go on with my work now, if you'll excuse me. My fear really changed to pity then. He seemed so helpless and tired, and he was so considerate. This man couldn't be a murderer. It was all a coincidence. Besides, we just couldn't afford to lose that 30 shillings a week. Around 10 in the morning, he left the cottage, and I decided to go upstairs and have a look about his room. I had to find out what he carried in his one piece of luggage. It wasn't a bag. It was more like a case. Yes, a case. A case for a knife. I rushed up the stairs, my heart beating wildly at the thought I'd had of the case. There wasn't anything in his closet. I went over to the chest of drawers against the wall. Nothing in the top one. In the next one were some socks, underclothes. The next one was empty. There was only one other place for the small narrow case, the bottom drawer. And it was locked. I pulled and pulled at it, and then suddenly I heard the front door open downstairs. In a panic, I rushed out of the room and down the hall. Oh, you're upstairs, Ellen. Look, look, Ellen, Daisy's here. Oh, thank heaven. Oh, Mother, it's so good to see you. It's so good to be home. Why, whatever's the matter? Yes, you're, you're quite white, Ellen. Oh, it's, it's, I'm all right. It's just that I wasn't expecting you so soon. Well, it's good to be back. The country's all right, but there's nothing like London now, is there? No, no, there isn't. 
Well, as long as that Avenger's about, you're going to have to do something to keep this young lady indoors, London or no London. <laughs> oh, don't you worry. Mother will see to that. Well, Daisy, I might as well get you settled. <laughs> you see, Father, what did I tell you? She'll have a dust cloth in my hand before I have my coat off. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sleuth. Why is my door open? We we were just leaving, sir. Have you been in my room? Uh, not at all, sir. From now on, Mrs. Bunting, I shall keep my room locked. But you see, sir, I was just tidying up a bit, and Mr. Bunting, she brought our daughter home, and she just arrived, and this is Daisy. Pleased to meet you, sir. She's been away for quite a while. That's why we're a bit excited, you might say. You, you were probably surprised to hear us laughing and carrying on. Yes, yes, I must say I was. But then there are different kinds of joy. Are there not, Daisy? Yes, I'm sure there yes, are. Yes, there are. The, 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 there's the despicable, evil joy of the abandoned. And there is the divine happiness of the blessed. A great difference. You, you understand that, Daisy, don't you? Why, yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Sleuth. Uh, there are so few young women nowadays who do. Why, Mr. Sleuth? You mean a girl's not to enjoy life at all? Not to have any fun? Enjoyment and fun, my child are the devil's breeding ground, and his implements are there. Pleasure, impropriety, and temptation of music, dancing. Oh, that's crazy. Why, there's nothing I like better than dancing, and I'm not... You so... like to dance? She didn't know what she was saying, Mr. Sleuth. Just the child. Daisy, you know you've never been one for dancing. You never learned how. Oh, but I did learn, Mother, while I was away. What's so wrong about it? What's the harm in dancing? And she lies in wait for her prey and increases the transgressors among men. I don't know what you mean. I, I've never heard such nonsense. Nonsense? You call the scriptures nonsense? Daisy, Daisy, go in the front room. It's all right, Mrs. Bunting, it's all right. I'm used to such kind of talk. Good day. Daisy, Daisy, listen to me. Yes, Mother? I've got to tell you about, about... About what? Uh, nothing. I've got to go out for a while now. I'll be back. For a moment, I was about to tell of my awful suspicions. But I stopped. They were only suspicions. At the same time, I had a thought go to the coroner's inquest they were having into the Avengers' latest victims. I was hoping to hear something said that would clear my suspicions of the lodger. At least I'd give him this last chance. A lady was testifying as I took my seat. She'd seen the Avenger from her window, she said, and her description of him didn't tally with Mr. Sleuth. I can't tell you how relieved I was. Till it was pointed out she couldn't possibly have seen anyone that night from her window because of the fog. The next witness was a Mr. Cano. I leaned forward anxiously as they swore him in and began asking questions. A knife? Oh, this is terrible. You say, Mr. Cano, you're positive you saw this man? Positive, sir. It was only a few moments before the murder that I saw the Avenger. Describe him. He wore a black cape, I believe. It was very gaunt looking. He was carrying a small handbag. A handbag? Yes, a small, narrow handbag. Such a one as might contain a knife. <gasps> a knife? A knife? Oh, this is Guilty. Terrible. Absolutely. Oh, that was with a knife. He walks around with a knife. Silence in the court. He had a low, hesitating voice, I'd say with something of a continental accent. An educated man, I'd judge, but quite mad. What do you mean by that? 
Well, as he emerged from the fog, he was talking aloud to himself. Believe me, sir, he was reciting scriptures from the Bible. Scripture? Oh, the Bible. You don't know the Bible? No, no, it can't be. It can't be. And for it. That's not a good Welcome right up. Lock it up. Could there be any doubt about it now? Mr. Sleuth, our lodger, was the murderer. I got out of the courtroom as quick as I could. I didn't even notice it had started to rain. I hardly remember going home, running and walking somehow, while slowly the nightmare of fear and terror grew bigger and bigger inside me. It was three streets from our cottage that I saw Mr. Robert Bunting. One thought hit me clearly. I realized Daisy must be home alone with the Avenger. Bunting! Bunting! Why, Ellen! Ellen, what is it? Bunting, where's Daisy? Where is she, I say? Where's Daisy? Why, she's at home. Listen, Bunting, listen. Sleuth is the Avenger. What? What are you saying? Our lodger. He's the Avenger. Daisy's alone with him right now. Hurry. Listen to me carefully, my child. Rejoice with me in your heart, for the moment is at hand. You're not afraid, Daisy, are you? No, I'm not afraid. You're very beautiful, and you should live in the ways of righteousness. You hear me, Daisy? You want to live in the ways of righteousness, don't you? Yes. Yes, I do. I know you do. And that is why I have been sent to purge your soul, so that you will be elevated beyond all sin and evil. You like to dance, Daisy, don't you? Six have gone before you, and they are beyond all sin and evil. You are the seventh to be elevated, my child. And my work is almost done for the seventh I have promised at this appointed hour. Be still, Daisy. Be still, Daisy. And don't listen to the temptation of the crowd when they call out your name. Daisy, where are you? To save you from all evil and wickedness. To In Mr. Room, like a wild oh, fire okay. and scarlet and crimson. Do you like to dance, don't you? Yes, I do. Look at me, Daisy, child. are My you child, in there? Don't fear She's in me. there. I and know she is. Do not tremble. Is. Woe to them that call evil good and good Daisy, evil. And open the door. darkness for light open and light for it, darkness. Look, look and therefore, I must look bring you down like a lamb to the slaughter. And I lift my hand with hurry, the flaming sword. For now comes the vengeance and the time give to rejoice. Give me that boy. Daisy! Daisy, she's in there! Oh, Bunting! Oh, hurry, Bunting! Stop him! Stop him! He'll kill her! Daisy, come here! Drop that knife, you fiend! Drop it! Oh, mother! Mother! Thank heaven, you're safe! You're safe! Drop that knife, you! Take your hands away! Let me go! Get away! Don't you know that such that are for death, for death, and that such that are for the sword, to the sword, and no one there to have pity on them? Here! Here! Watch out, Daisy! His knife! His knife! Oh, oh. Mercy, he fell on the knife. Yes, it's burning in me like fire. Oh, it purges me and consumes me. All sin and evil are falling away. Praise and glory. For it is I who is the seventh. Yes, the vengeance is fulfilled. Oh. (laughs) 
So concludes our production of the classic radio thriller, The Lodger. Tonight's broadcast featured the Murder Cafe players, Kristen Marquette, Jim Keenan, Dan Anderson, Jessica Boyd, and Luke Latour. The production was directed by Frank Marquette from William T. Johnson's original script. Our sponsors for The Lodger are Studio KTM and Ulster Savings Bank. Studio KTM, the Hudson Valley's only Natulik certified organic hair color location. Dedicated to unparalleled personal service and attention to detail in a uniquely calm and welcoming setting, Kristen Marquette turns your cut, color, or keratin service into art you wear. Unwind and renew, knowing Kristen uses only the best in clean and green products for your health and beauty. Studio KTM consultation and appointments are available by calling 845-758-6092. Ulster Savings Bank, a local bank that's more than just banking, with locations throughout the Hudson Valley and online at ulstersavings.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender.